Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi everyone, uh, welcome. Uh, in this session, uh, in addition to continuing what we have discussed in the previous session uh, of shift in LN cow and IS cow, uh, we will discuss the fiscal policy and monetary policy multiplier. And subsequently, uh, we di also discuss the derivation of aggregate demand curve from ISLM model. So, let us continue, uh, begin with the discussion. Uh, that we started in the previous class. Uh, in the previous class, uh, we started uh, how uh, GDP that uh, aggregate demand or the income is going to change uh, when there is uh, increase in money supply and subsequently we started with uh, fiscal policy that means increase in government expenditure or increase in tax how is going to affect uh, income in the macroeconomy. So, this one I have shown you in the previous session that means when there is increase in government expenditure we have seen that the IS curve will be shifting rightwards uh, this is the that uh, this uh, distance uh, is the full Keynesian multiplier that is simple Keynesian multiplier. However, because the reason that we have outlined in the previous session uh, rate of interest increase from R0 to R1 and the as a result uh, instead of increase in output till uh, from Y0 to Y epsilon 1 uh, the increase in uh, uh, output is going to be only this much that the y naught y1 distance. So, because the new equilibrium position is uh, at b. So, what we have seen here is that due to increase in government expenditure, uh, we can see that the rate of interest has risen from r naught to r1. So, as a result, because of the increase in uh, rate of interest, uh, it discourages uh, private investment, that means a kind of a crowding out effect happens. That means, uh, increase in government expenditure increases rate of interest uh, which further uh, decrease uh, or crowd out private investment. So, as a result, uh, we can see that uh, which is our is supposed to be increase income was this much, uh, but actual increase in income was only uh, Y0 to uh, Y1. So, this is due to the crowding out effect of government expenditure on uh, private investment. Subsequently, what if there is increase in tax? So, increase in tax, the initial uh, equilibrium position is here, uh, look at here, um, initial equilibrium position. So, the IS curve shift uh, leftwards, uh, then as a result uh, you can see that this is the full negative impact supposed to happen due to increase in tax. However, since due to decrease in uh, tax, that means it is also you can say that uh, look like uh, you can interpret it as a decrease in government expenditure as well. So, here you can see that the rate of interest decrease from R0 to R1 and as a result actually supposed to be this much decrease in output is supposed to happen, but due to the decline in uh, rate of interest we can see that uh, decline in output is only this much del Y uh, is this much that the Y1 uh, Y0 this, this distance. Suppose when there is government expenditure, that the increase in government expenditure, we have seen that the rate of interest increase and as a result the increase in output is only this much, right, uh, here only actually this much, this one only uh, y epsilon 1. The main reason for this one that we have seen that because of the crowding out effect of pri on private investment. Uh, because increase in uh, rate of interest. So, in order to compensate that, the one option normally, uh, what if the, when there is an increase in government expenditure, obviously there will be a uh, budget deficit. So, in order to monetize that, in order to raise fine finance for that, sometimes uh, a policy mix happen. That means an equivalent amount of money, uh, money supply is injected into the economy. Uh, 
uh, that means uh, uh, increase in money supply happen in order to finance the budget deficit. So, as a result, you know, initially suppose that IS curve shifted from uh, left to right, that means IS T0 to T1, so that is shifted to here, and this is the new equilibrium position. Uh, but if suppose there is a policy mix, that means an accommodative uh, monetary policy, that means uh, when government expenditure increase in order to finance that, uh, when money supply also increase and more the budget deficit is monetized, then you can see that the LN curve will be shifting rightwards. So, when the LN curve is shifting rightwards, that means you can see a uh, rate of interest will uh, if come down. Initially, rate of interest increase, uh, its impact is neutralized by uh, increase in money supply. So, this actually in order to overcome the crowding out effect, uh, if there is equivalent increase in money supply, then you can see that uh, our output is going to increase to Y1. So, this is the initial equilibrium position A, B and finally C. That means initially increase in government expenditure, uh, equilibrium uh, going to happen from uh, A to B with increase in uh, rate of interest. But if there is equivalent increase in money supply, L and cow shift rightwards and the C is going to be the new point of equilibrium and rate of interest will be restored at the initial position and the uh, output increase to from Y0 to uh, Y1. So, del Y is this, this, this much. So, in this case, uh, it is also related to one kind of interest rate uh, targeting. Suppose, uh, when the policy makers do not want to see that rate of interest increase or decrease, they, if they want to see a constant rate of interest, then in this case, this kind of policy is also called as interest rate targeting rule. And in this case, in the, if that is the scenario, suppose if they do not want to see the rate of interest increasing at all or no, no change in interest rate and for example, if they want to see interest rate for example, 5 percentage at a constant rate of 5 percentage and in that case, they have to increase money supply in the same proportion and similarly, if they want to see a uh, rate of interest at a 7 percentage, then they will be increasing money supply at, the, uh, at a 7 percentage rate. So, that means uh, in order to ensure that the rate of interest is constant, accordingly uh, money supply will be adjusted. So, in this case, you can say that if they want clearly a particular uh, rate of interest, then in this case, you can see that uh, the LN curve, uh, LN curve is going to be horizontal. This is the LN curve if they clearly want. Uh, the rate of interest is at a uh, fixed uh, rate that means for example 5 percentage right so in this case is going to be perfectly elastic uh, in contrast to this if they want to allow some flexibility so in that case the some range uh, the some confidence interval at the lower and upper level that means they are not looking for a point uh, uh, interest rate targeting instead a confident with a confidence interval. In this case, that is the case the LN curve is going to be like this uh, LM1 or if uh, range is very low, then the curve is going to be a little bit more flat. Right. So, that means um, if they use uh, a range of interest rate target, then it is going to be more flat. Uh, it is going to be flat and if they do point interest rate target, then LN curve is going to be uh, perfectly elastic. Now, let us proceed uh, with deriving fiscal policy multiplier and monetary policy uh, multiplier. This is the ISLM, from the ISLM we have derived uh, when equating the equilibrium uh, income and equilibrium rate of interest, uh, we have derived uh, this equation from IS equation and from uh, LM equation. So, finally, we got this uh, equation that means y is equal to uh, this um, uh, the left hand side, uh, first left hand side is called the um, multiplier component and the, the other side is the autonomous component and uh, this one is further due to the money market in the picture. So, here what we are going to do here is uh, what if the government expenditure is increased by for example, 100 million. So, you know for example, uh, see government expenditure is going to be for example, 100 uh, million, then we see that um, output also increase, but how much? If output increase, uh, for example, if the output has been increased by to uh, 200 million due to increase in government expenditure. Uh, then in this case, we can see that the multiplier, the government expenditure multiplier uh, is going to be 2, right? 
the government expenditure multiplier is going to be uh, 2 here because 200 divided by uh, 100 so we are going to get uh, 2 that is the multiplier so what does it mean that when government expenditure with the 100 million we can see that that is 2 times increase in output so this is the basic intuition behind uh, the multiplier idea so in the ISLM framework let us see uh, what are the factors that determine uh, the values of uh, government expenditure multiplier so the here the expenditure multiplier we are going to see uh, to, to what uh, what the uh, effect of uh, what is the quantitative effect of my government expenditure on uh, del y keeping other exogenous variables constant so you can look at change in uh, GDP output uh, due to change in government expenditure if you take the first derivative uh, you are going to get uh, this value right. So that means uh, this is the fiscal expenditure that the fiscal policy or government expenditure uh, multiplier from here this is the government expenditure multiplier. So in the simple Keynesian model without money market the government expenditure that the government expenditure multiplier was uh, del by by uh, del G uh, is uh, 1 by 1 minus b that means there is no uh, that is full multiplier uh, in the simple Keynesian model but since we know that due to the crowding out effect uh, we can say that increase in output or uh, del y due to del g is less than in the ISLM model as compared to the uh, simple Keynesian model. So the government expenditure in government expenditure multiplier in ISLM is less than the simple Keynesian multiplier that means we can see uh, uh, this is going to be del y due to simple Keynesian multiplier time minus a uh, del y loss due to crowding out effect due to increase in uh, interest rate that we have seen in the uh, previous diagram as well. So that means uh, here we need to add the, this component um, uh, also in the uh, fiscal policy multiplier in the ISLM model. In the simple Keynesian model we have only uh, this much. Then coming to the tax multiplier uh, we are going to see what is the effect on del T on del Y. Uh, here the formula is that you can take the first derivative of del Y. Uh, del G with respect to del Y uh, so you are going to get uh, this value that means uh, this is the tax multiplier in the simple Keynesian model uh, the tax multiplier was uh, simple Keynesian model uh, tax multiplier was uh, only 1 minus B uh, 1 minus B right but in the ISLM model uh, we are going to get the crowding out the negative effect uh, actually the value is here negative you can see that because of tax the output is going to decline uh, but in the I, in the simple Keynesian model uh, the, there is huge large increase decline in uh, output but in the ISLM model uh, that it, there won't be large the, it will be less than uh, the decline in output is in ISLM model is less than that of uh, simple Keynesian model because you can see that because of the money market effect uh, when government has been, uh, when there is increase in tax uh, you can see that uh, there will be decline in the rate of interest that will induce uh, uh, private investment as a result the expected decline in uh, del y is less than that of in ISLM model is less than that of the simple Keynesian model. So look at this, this is the government expenditure multiplier, uh, fiscal policy multiplier. So here what I am showing you uh, is that when there is increase in uh, government expenditure the IS curve shift from here to from here it shift to from left to right you can see it's shifting from left to right so the new equilibrium position with the intersection between is curve and ln curve is going to happen at this point and you know that as per if there was no uh, lm and money market at all then the increase in uh, government expenditure would result in increase in gdp from uh, y0 to y1 y, uh, y epsilon 1 but uh, due to money market uh, that uh, money market uh, the rate of interest go will increase uh, due to the uh, expansionary fiscal policy. So as a result the actual increase in actual increase in uh, output is only uh, y not y1 right. So that means uh, this much uh, loss uh, in GDP this much this much loss in GDP is due to crowding out effect. So the actual increase uh, this distance that the y not to y1 uh, this y not to y1 uh, this uh, happen uh, with this value this times uh, del G this 
times uh, del g this is uh, uh, the increase in uh, this much uh, uh, increase in that uh, del y uh, this is equal to uh, del g times uh, this fiscal policy multiplier let us now talk the uh, monetary policy multiplier uh, in the monetary policy multiplier uh, again let us start using uh, the ISLM combined equation uh, ISLM equation combined equation so del y so let us see del y due to change in money supply so when you take the first derivative you are going to get uh, this value this means this is the uh, monetary policy multiplier so monetary policy multiplier is this one this is the uh, for the simplified version uh, that means the monetary policy multiplier so that means due to change in money supply uh, due to change in money supply gdp will increase output will increase uh, this times multiplied by uh, del uh, m s uh, is equal to uh, the del y this is the multiplier effect of the monetary policy in a macroeconomy in the islm uh, framework so presenting this one uh, graphically we can see that uh, this distance uh, this del y uh, is due to uh, uh, monetary policy so this that we are going to get del y is equal to the multiplier the money multiplier uh, monetary policy multiplier um, that we derived monetary policy multiplier that we derived uh, this yeah, is the monetary policy multiplier that we derived in the previous slide uh, times uh, del m s so this is going to be uh, this value so you can see that uh, because of increase in money supply output increase to from y0 to y1 this del y uh, this is the s multiplier times this multiplier times uh, uh, money supply so this is the summary of the effects of monetary and fiscal policy variables starting with the effect of this is uh, money supply uh, this is uh, government expenditure this is tax suppose there is increase in money supply uh, you can see that effect on y first start with the effect on y this will increase um, uh, y will increase but rate of interest will decrease similarly increase in government expenditure you can say that output will increase uh, rate of interest also will increase so similarly in, uh, in contrast you can see that increase in uh, tax it will reduce output uh, it will reduce uh, rate of interest as well so this is the larger picture the uh, structure of ISLM model so what we have discussed so far putting in the, the in the ISLM model plugging or e introducing uh, monetary and fiscal policy these are the two important component uh, of economic policy so the monetary policy affects in this way that means it will affect money market that means it also affect bond market uh, this has an implication on interest rate uh, similarly the above and the and this would further affect uh, aggregate demand right that is about the goods market this further lead to increase in income and further again increase in income how impact on goods market as well as um, uh, assets market as well similarly uh, fiscal policy is going to directly impact the goods market then it will increase the income in the economy and then you can see that because of the increase in income we can say that it has impact on uh, money market and bond market so we have seen the change in interest rate that actually coming from fiscal policy in this way that means increase in income uh, for a transaction demand for money but assuming money supply is constant then you can see that rate of interest is going to increase the again increase in change in rate of interest uh, it will have further impact on uh, output right so this is the broader picture we can further present uh, this one uh, in this way that means the ISLM model is real sector and the uh, money market that is the IS curve and LM curve that is ISLM model uh, this is going to affect aggregate demand and subsequently um, um, actually mainly the ISLM models impact this on the aggregate demand curve not on the aggregate supply curve and then the macroeconomic equilibrium you can see that uh, aggregate demand should be equal to aggregate supply so that macroeconomy is at equilibrium 
so this actually used for as an explanation for short run fluctuations in the macroeconomy. So, in that way to understand um, the macroeconomic fluctuation at the short run and as well as to influence uh, you know in order to adjust in order to as a risk management in order to correct the economy or restore the economy back to uh, its initial equilibrium uh, in the short run uh, the IS cow and LS, LM cow um, we can we can use it as a tool to understand as well as especially uh, how different policy especially to understand the policy effects particularly uh, fiscal and monetary policy effects in the uh, macroeconomy in the short run. So, actually in the ISLM model is uh, a short run is used to understand uh, the short run fluctuations uh, in the economy especially the policy effects in the short run. Um, so, let us now move to the further related topic in the ISLM. So, what we have been keep on telling in this uh, session and last previous session suppose if there is increase in government expenditure we have seen that there is increase in income. And uh, similarly, uh, the when there is increase in money supply, that means an expansionary monetary policy, there also we have seen uh, there is uh, increase uh, in income. But actually what I meant there uh, is actually I meant increase in income means actually increase in aggregate demand. So, that means increase in income means aggregate demand. So, equivalently we also mentioned uh, increase in aggregate output, uh, aggregate income or aggregate demand, but actually what we meant here is. Uh, aggregate demand, uh, we did not uh, discuss, uh, we did not mention uh, aggregate supply because aggregate supply that is the productive sectors of the economy uh, has to produce goods and services. Uh, it depends on so many other factors. What we meant here is that the demand for goods and services from the economy that means uh, increase in C plus I plus D. That is what we meant when we say that when there is increase in income. So, let us elaborate this point further. Uh, in the IS schedule, um, our one of the IS and LM schedule, one of our assumption was that price remaining constant, price remaining constant and similarly um, money supply also remaining constant, right. So, in the IS schedule, uh, we mentioned it like this, that means investment is a function of rate of interest and saving is a function of uh, Y. In LM schedule, uh, also we mentioned that means uh, money supply, uh, we assume that price remain constant, uh, money supply uh, also remain constant. So, the demand for money is a function of uh, income and rate of interest. So, when we discuss at that money supply, we meant real money supply that means uh, money supply divided by the um, uh, price level. So, what if uh, we change the price level, that what if price level changes, that means uh, increases from P0 to P1 to P2 like that, keeping uh, the nominal money supply fixed, the money supply by the uh, central bank fixed and what if we change uh, price level, that means increase for the sake of simplicity, let us increase price level from P0 to P1, then P1 to P2, then how does uh, it affect? Uh, our ISLM model. So, in this case um, when there is increase suppose the money supply is fixed assume that money supply is M naught when price level is increase from sub from price level is uh, increase from P1, P0 to P1 and further P1 to uh, P2 uh, what we can see that suppose this is the initial situation that the price level is P0 and keeping money supply this one at fixed level when uh, price level is increased, then you can see that uh, the nominal terms money supply remaining same, but in real terms uh, money supply has decreased because the purchasing power of money has declined, right, because the price level has increased. So, similarly when price level further increased to P2, keeping the initial the nominal money supply same, then you can further see that uh, in real terms uh, money supply has decreased. So, translating this one in a figure, uh, look at this. Uh, here throughout um, look at this the initial equilibrium position uh, where IS curve uh, because uh, IS curve this is the initial IS curve and this is the initial LM curve uh, and the money market and uh, goods market is at equilibrium. So, this is the condition when we assume that um, the price level remaining same, but now uh, let us uh, change the price level from P naught uh, to uh, P1 and to uh, P2 
but we assume uh, take the money level, money supply that in nominal terms we assume uh, this remaining constant. That means if um, price level is increased, we will discuss how price level will increase. For the time being, for this slide, assume that we are deliberately, arbitrarily increasing the price level. When the price level is increased, then you can see that um, the same uh, fixed money supply when the price level is increased to P1, uh, then that means real money supply uh, declines, right? There is a decline or fall in the real money supply. We have seen in the previous session that when there is increase or decrease in money supply, L and curve shift. When increase in money supply, uh, we have seen that L and curve shift rightwards. But here, since there is decrease in money supply, then you can say that uh, L and curve will be shifting leftwards. So that means uh, when the price level is P naught, equilibrium position is uh, A. Uh, when the price level increase keeping the nominal money supply constant that means real money supply uh, decrease new equilibrium position is B that means this is at a price level P1 right this is at a price level P0 further if we increase the price level to P2 uh, keeping nominal money supply M0 constant then you can see that further the L curve will be shifting further leftwards uh, then you can see that um, this is going to be the further new equilibrium. So that means at each then you can also see that the rate of interest is increasing from R0 to R1 and R1 to R2. So taking this price level on the y axis in the part B diagram in the part A diagram but we dis just discussed now uh, taking this one in the uh, part B diagram keeping price level on the y axis uh, you can see that. Um, at a P naught price, uh, you can see this is the output, corresponding output is here. When the price level is increased, the equilibrium position, you can see that uh, point equilibrium position B and equilibrium position C. Uh, so here what we are seeing that uh, on the right hand side, we are having output uh, that is aggregate demand, aggregate demand at the, when the at money supply. Uh, M naught nominal money supply at M naught and at a different price level you can see that output is declining when the price level increases the demand decreases that means we are seeing an inverse relationship between uh, price level and aggregate demand. So this is actually this is uh, the way that we can derive an aggregate demand curve from the ISLM model that means when we take a flexible prices when we increase price then you can see L and curve is shifting leftwards that means new equilibrium position. So accordingly putting this one translating this one to part B diagram you can see that at the increasing price level there is decrease increase in price level uh, there is decrease in output otherwise uh, decrease in price level uh, you can say there is increase in output. For example uh, if the price level is decrease further uh, you can see that you can see that L and curve will be shifting rightwards. So this is going to be uh, uh, further equilibrium position right. So that means what we have seen here is that the inverse relationship between um, price and quantity demanded at aggregate level this is nothing but uh, the aggregate demand curve. So we can derive aggregate demand curve uh, from this diagram. Let us discuss this for in for more details uh, in the next session. Uh, then we, he, there we will be seeing that uh, what one assuming price change uh, then subsequently there is uh, increase in government expenditure and for similarly increase in money supply how does it affect aggregate demand etc. Uh, thank you, thank you so much, uh, see you in the next session.